Thanks everyone for coming back after the break. Uh, it's been a long day. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, as uh, Charlotte said, my name is Ben Bedell. Um, I've been with Dimension Data for six years, as she said, and my focus at the moment is around end user computing and unified communications. I also have a bit of a, a specialty around identity and access, so um, I like to blend that into, into my presentations as well. I'm going to do a bit of an introduction to and you would have heard a lot of this already today, a bit of an introduction into why a secure enterprise mobility strategy is a good idea. And also, I'll walk you through a sample framework that Dimension Data have developed. Now, we've got a, a few different versions of this. Uh, this is a, a version that's going to be updated in a few weeks' time, and I'll, I'll be happy to, if you give us your details, send you out the latest version when that comes through. Um, on the slide here, Dimension Data did a survey of uh, customers globally, uh, 1,622. Uh, to ask them how they viewed enterprise mobility. And there's a, a slide in here with some of the survey results. You'll also be able to pick up the survey results from our uh, stand out there in the, in the lunchroom. So what are we trying to address? We're looking at enterprise mobility growing into our business and things like, concepts like BOIOD are adding devices in, sometimes through the back door, uh, other departments are purchasing these, uh, student, uh, Staff are bringing them in and asking us to manage them in IT. Along with that, the amount of data that's going onto them can present a risk. If we're talking about data that's business critical, maybe it's just emails, maybe it's business applications sitting and living on those devices, we need to find a way to manage those. There are different rules and regulations globally. You may be part of an industry that is regulated, that has a particular level that you need to work at before you are able to operate in that industry. There's, a, there's always a risk there that that data might get out. And so our, uh, our aim is to reduce that uh, and look at the way that we can uh, also take benefit from, the end, from mobility at the same time. We want to be able to reduce the, the costs, both operational and uh, reputation, from, uh, from mobility. Okay, so here we've got the snapshot of our global survey results. I'm just going to point out a few key things, and really the idea here is to give you an indication of where you sit compared to some of our other clients. So you can see here the two blue boxes, uh, both 79%, those are where they're ranking mobility as a high priority, and also that they're seeing it as something that's going to actually improve productivity of their users. Um, now, the orange boxes are, are where we're seeing the, the, the issues. So we've got here 68% haven't completed a security assessment of their key applications. So those are the applications that they know the, are going to be used on mobile devices. They don't know how secure they're going to be. 71% haven't actually assessed what applications they've got that they're going to put out onto their mobile devices. And over here, we're a bit more user-focused. 73% of the users say that they don't feel there's a mobility policy in place. So even though organisations, most organisations will have a mobility policy, the users aren't aware of it. And so they're going to be bringing devices in uh, or purchasing devices in on BYOD and not potentially buying the right device. And the final one there is 61% are saying that they can't get access to the apps that they need. So 61%, more than half, are saying, sure, I've got an email, but what about the other apps that I need to, to run, to do my business, to do my job more efficiently on the go? Uh, this is the, the who cares slide. Uh, it really is, it's not, it's, mobility is not just a technology problem, it's a business problem. And it's about creating an experience for the end user that makes them, well, want to use the device, want to do work, and do it uh, more effectively wherever they are. It's uh, the four, four corners here, it's probably a bit hard for you to read at the back. Uh, I think you're going to get a copy of these slides. I'll just call out a couple of them. So we've got here the CEO. The CEO's view is they want to improve their, um, their organisation and make it appear to be more innovative and maybe attract better staff. The, the end user wants better work-life balance, wants to be more product productive, but doesn't want to necessarily be in the office nine to five, but still wants to be able to do their job. And of course, the CFO uh, wants to be able to say, I'm not going to spend too much money to get a good investment, so a good, good return on my investment. Um, nothing's going to come up on this slide, I'll just talk you through it. This is really where we're saying to achieve those things, we're going to have a, a, need a strategy. So the framework around that is like any IT project, there are three things that you need. First, you need to know your requirements, 
and that's the requirements of not just yourself, but also your end users and your, your finance officer and your CEO, understand the requirements. Secondly, develop your strategy. And that strategy needs to have the architecture, the IT systems and your IT processes. It can't just be about the technology. And third, self-assessment. So look at what your requirements were, see what your strategy is and measure yourself how far along that path you are at the moment. The end game, I guess, is to try and increase your productivity around using mobile applications and also reducing that your, your overall capital expenditure. Again, I apologise for the eye test for those at the back of the room. Um, this is our uh, version of our enterprise mobility framework. And we work through this with our customers to define their mobility strategy. At the centre here, very small green head is the user. And that user could be anybody. It could be a mobile salesperson. Uh, it could be uh, somebody like a nurse who maybe works within the confines of a building, doesn't necessarily need that device outside of the building. And it could be uh, an executive who's uh, always travelling in airports, maybe at their desk sometimes. There's a mixture. So th think about the users being a wide variety of people. At devices, there's a wide variety of devices out here. So you, everyone knows the most popular device. We've got other devices out there that you should be considering. Our, our approach is we should really em embrace device diversity. Um, once you get tied into a particular vendor, you're tied into their vision of what you can do in terms of enterprise mobility. The second component here is the network. Now, whether it's Wi-Fi on campus, uh, home network, 3G, uh, hotspots, the experience for the user should be the same. And we call that uh, network singularity. And, and certainly it's, it's the experience that many users will say is, is limited at the moment when they're on their, their home Wi-Fi is okay, in the office Wi-Fi is okay, but maybe it's not, not that great when they're on a 3G or 4G connection. One of the central components of this framework is security. It's probably the most important in my, my mind. It's also the one that uh, many of the researchers, including IDC, have pointed out that it's the key blocker for these projects succeeding. So not just that it's insecure, but the perception that it's insecure. And it doesn't need to be. When we, need, when we dig deeper, we see a need to think about the people, the technology, and of course the policies around your security. Device security uh, is a big concern, and I have, I've had a conversation with a few of you outside around this. Um, the approach that we recommend isn't necessarily testing every single device that comes into the organisation to make sure it works in a particular way. We are, we're talking about actually ensuring that that device has the controls that you need, uh, in particular, say, pin lock, encryption, I'm going to forget this, I'm going to read, remote wipe, remote kill, and... Uh, and those sorts of controls that is common across most the majority of the devices these days. And what you can do is then marry up the controls that you have with the applications that the users can receive. So you can actually control at the, at the business level and say, if you don't have this control, you don't get access to this application. So if you're going to have a business critical application stored on your device, then it must have remote kill, it must have encryption, it must have PIN. And that way you, empower, you, you say to your users, this is our policy, then you empower that user to make the choice about the device, if they're going to go buy their own, to say, right, I'm going to get one that's got pin lock and it's got encryption because otherwise I won't be able to get the apps that I want. So we talked about on the, the survey results, that policy. Make sure the users know what the policy is. Don't just send it out an email, have it published, have it advertised, put posters around so people are aware of it. Um, and I guess the benefit out of that is if you're not testing every device, IT departments aren't spending all their time. You know, latest version of Android comes out, latest version of iOS comes out. Uh, as long as it's got those base level of controls, you should be able to trust that it's going to give you what you need. Uh, next slide here is uh, around operational excellence. Um, how are we going to support these users? So part of the framework needs to consider, are we going to add in new systems to manage this? Uh, are we going to support the devices? Is it all going to be done internally? Are we going to outsource it? Um, there's, there's going to be a need of support for the end users in this new way of working, and are we going to do it internally? Think about also the contracts, and this is another conversation that came up this morning. Who owns the data plan? Who's going to pay for the data plan if uh, they decide to start roaming to 4G and wrapping up huge bills when they're overseas? Um, 
and, and also critically, how are we going to actually, in terms of strategy, how are we going to drive user adoption? How are we going to, we're putting all this investment into this infrastructure, how are we then going to make sure that users use it and take advantage from it? And the final part of the framework is the applications themselves. And again, more conversations this morning and this afternoon around the applications and some of the challenges that you've had uh, yourself already around getting that application delivered in the right way. Uh, I've heard some people going down the VDI path, uh, other people having applications written, customly, custom applications written for those devices. Um, there's, there's the opportunity at the moment to do custom applications, but also are we actually looking at giving those applications to users uh, that are also using them on a desktop? So if, we, if a, user, well, a, a user at the centre there might not only be a mobile user, they may also use a laptop. Do they need a different experience when they're mobile? Maybe they do, and those, those are the things we need to consider. Um, in the centre tier there is unified communications, and I guess the, the example I give uh, is in terms of conferencing. If I'm dialled into a video conference from my tablet, I don't want to have a limited experience. I don't want it to be lesser than when I'm on my laptop. I want to be able to see all the content, I want to be able to see the video, I want to have my video shown as well. I don't want it to be uh, a cut back version of that experience. And that's true for the bulk of the applications. There, there still needs to be feature rich. And so we can't just whip up a mobile app and stick a few buttons on and say, hey, there you go, it's all good. It needs to, needs to consider the use, utility of that application. And the final component there over there is productivity, so business applications. Um, think, is, is it going to be as is or is it going to be designed for mobile? So it's the same message. Are we actually going to customise a version? Are we going to make it so that it works better for mobile or are we going to give them a similar experience? And these, these are all decisions that need to be worked out almost app by app, but, but more uh, around the category of applications. I guess the, the cementing point there is it's not just email. We have a, e email now is almost accepted that everyone has email on their mobile devices. The majority of people do. We need to think beyond email in terms of applications for mobility. In summary on the framework, we just need to make sure that you know in advance what it is that you want to achieve. Uh, and then align that vision with your IT strategies and make sure that your architecture includes the mobility components. Make sure you can deliver and support it and then ask, is it going to be limited to a few apps and devices or are we just going to give them email? We're we going to give them email or we're we going to give them stuff that will be useful for them. So ask your users, ask your business units, what is it that they want to use? And, and as a final thought to wrap this up, um, this slide We've got over here on the left hand side the traditional model of IT, so we've got de desktops and laptops accessing data and applications. We've talked about mobility, but we don't need to think of it as a separate component. It should be part of your IT architecture, fit it into your overall IT strategy. The, the move that we're calling that is, uh, is user-based computing, where the users at the centre, they choose what device they're going to use, whether it's a tablet or a laptop or a desktop or a thin terminal, and access their applications through those devices. That the data and whatever else is accessed through the same way, no matter where they are. So the, the person, their identity is the important thing, not where they are or what they're using. Um, and I guess there was a, a few other comments that came up earlier around taking um, a new platform and putting it in place. Why not consider having one, one platform that manages both your desktop and your, and your mobile applications? There's, there are tools out there that are available to give you that benefit. Uh, it's certainly worth considering if it's part of your if mobility is going to be part of your long-term strategy. Okay, so we've only had a short time, and I'm, I'm nearly just about finished. Um, there's there's quite a few challenges that mobility brings, particularly around security, uh, and to meet those challenges, you really do need to plan. So a strategy is is highly important. Make sure you've got that strategy defined. Make sure you involve all of the the uh, business owners, all of the different stakeholders in that strategy discussion. It should give you the confidence to proceed and move, move away from that 79% uh, who are thinking it's a good thing and the only 63% who think it's all right, who, who actually gone along and done it. Um, thanks for your attention. Is there Thank you all. I'm John Delaney, Associate VP of Mobility Research at IDC Europe. And I'm here with Mark Holmes of Dimension Data here at our Consumerization of IT conference. Mark, what's your impression of the event so far? 
Well, John, I've been very pleased today. Uh, one of the big things for me today was to actually meet end users. Um, I've spent a lot of my time in uh, working with our solutions teams and our vendors. But what's great today was that actually that, that very high touch uh, situation with the clients where you can ask them questions where they're actually giving you information about how they feel rather than you trying to force uh, questions onto them. They're coming back to you with, yeah, with information. And what sort of key messages have, have come out so far for you? What have, what have been the key takeaways? Well, key, one of the big key takeaways for me today is to understand that Yes, technology is there, and in fact, technology is running in advance of the user and the businesses. And if, for example, what I'm trying to say there is, if you look at where um, things like tablets have come from, they really come from the consumer world. That's really driven the business world, and the business world's lacking behind consumers. But now they're forcing that into the workspace. So what we need to understand as integrators is how to really engage with clients, understand the business needs, and then bring the technology which is already there to them in a way that they can digest it. Do you think? There's a realisation yet. Have you got that sense here today that mobility is about something bigger than consumerisation, about something less tactical and perhaps more strategic for the organisation? Absolutely. So I, I see enterprise mobility as a, a business transformation point. So where in the past we've come across technologies that have kind of disrupted the market, I think enterprise mobility is absolutely going to transform the market. It's going to take us from a world where we used to work into a different kind of work. This is more, um, in the past we've been very device-centric, I think in the future we're going to be very much user-centric. So it doesn't really matter what kind of device I'm using, it's the fact that I'm accessing information around the corporation, around our clients, where I can use that information. So it's, it, the, the, the centricity has changed. So what do you think that that means that people, like the kind of users that we've had here today, what does it mean in terms of what they need from a supplier like Dimension Data? Well, interestingly, one of the questions we asked today was around enterprise mobility as a service. And they all, all the people I've spoken to have said actually, I really find it very much too difficult to deal with. I'm finding this whole thing very uncomfortable for me because there's so many challenges, there's so many things I have to think about. And it's actually consuming my time in this area, right where I should be spending my time perhaps in a different part of the business, getting more value. Enterprise mobility is almost is disrupting my day-to-day -day work. So what I need is help. I need people to come in to help me to understand the market, understand the capabilities, and can help me on that journey. Excellent. Mark Holmes, thank you very much. Thank you very much.